Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing more of the Double Down Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which the first unit that we play in return, we play a random unit from our deck with the same provision cost. And that facilitates what is possibly the strongest deck ever. So let's go give it a look. So today we'll be celebrating the new year by revisiting what is now our most popular deck we've ever made, which also happens to be way easier to play in this event. That deck is Infinite Dagon Spam, because once Dagon evolves, once you've won a round, he switches abilities. After a certain number of turns have passed, his Death Wish ability powers up. Once he gets to that fifth turn, he will create a copy of himself in your hand when he gets destroyed. That means that you gain a card, and it's a copy of himself, so not only do you get card advantage, if you create enough Dagons, you can infinitely sustain this combo with never-ending Dagons, which once you add in the effects of all the other abilities, also means infinite points, infinite damage, and obviously infinite card advantage as you continue to add Dagon after Dagon. So that is the goal. It is quite literally just about unstoppable if we can pull it off because we have however many points we want to have, but the tricky thing is pulling it off in the first place. That is something though that we need to save for round three because it only works once Dagon has evolved and that only happens once we've won a round. So round one is really the tricky part. And generally the way that we win round one is by getting a little bit of consumption on the board, first of all, with probably a Slizzard, although we have a few other cards that can do it as well. Slizzard, though, is the most consistent source of consumption, most reliable source. Once we've done that, we can also potentially sneak in a Vran Warrior, which, because we are going to do a lot of consumption, will get boosted a lot very quickly. So that's not bad to get that on the board early. Then we have Death Wish cards that obviously we're going to want to consume to give ourselves targets for that consumption. And perhaps the best options are Arcuspore, which in this event, once we consume one of these, we get three more out from our deck. So that is pretty solid value, not only from a thinning standpoint, but from a pure pointage standpoint as well. Then once we've done that, we can also use Brewis Witch Rule, which once we consume this, will summon even more Death Wish cards out from our deck and give us even more targets for that consumption. That means that Slizzard, or whatever else we're using for the consumption, can go absolutely crazy and potentially boost up the Fran Warrior along the way. We can also throw in Ruin to help us do even more consumption. Basically, consume Ruin, it comes back out, so you get the three points back, and you still consume whatever other cards you might have wanted. Just be careful that you don't accidentally consume your Slizzard or something else that you still want to keep on the board, trying to make this your other Death Wish cards that are getting consumed by Ruhin. So that's the general idea of what we're trying to do in round one. Other than that, obviously, put additional Death Wish units on the board. Bridge Troll, Noon Wraith, this one a little bit questionable because technically spawning rats on your opponent's side of the board does mean you're giving your opponent points. But in this event where people are generally putting at least two cards on their side of the board every turn, that can mean they run out of board space very quickly. And so Noon Wraith putting a couple of one power units on your opponent's side of the board, at least in the long round, probably does pay off, preventing them from playing something else they wanted to use. But Siren gives you consumption and also has Death Wish ability to give you a few extra boosts. You can also throw in Vargas for a little more consumption. As we were saying, it doesn't necessarily need to be just the Slizzard, although that is really the best option for the consumption. Those are the key things you're trying to play in round one. Then, once you have won a round, suddenly you have the option to go for your super infinite Dagon combo, which is worth an infinite amount of points, damage, and card advantage. So, obviously, you pull that off, you're in very good shape. What you want to do to do that, though, is first of all, play a Cave Troll, probably in the melee row, and that's where we're going to hide our Dagons to help protect them. So, once you've done that, play Dagon. He is our only 14 provision cost card, which means you play one of them from your hand, you're going to get the other one out from your deck. So, you have two Dagons on the board and hide them behind your defender. Once you've done that, you're going to want to get some consumption ready to go. Want to wait to consume those Dagons until they're at that fifth turn where they can give you that extra Dagon in your hand, but since Slizzard takes a turn before it can actually use its consumption ability and you could consume some other things in the meantime, you can still play Slizzard on that third turn after you have the Defender and after you have Dagons on the board as well. Once you've done that, you could go Weavis Incantation in the ranged row. The tricky thing about this is, this is one of our 10 provision cost cards, and obviously we love the extra Death Wish trigger here. However, it also comes along with the possibility of getting a Rockus Queen out immediately. Now, eventually, we are going to absolutely want to use a Rockus Queen to consume one of those Dagons, but generally, I try to wait until one of the Dagons is up to its fifth counter for its fully powered up Death Wish ability. That way, if I am forced to use that Arrakis Queen, at least I can immediately use it to consume its desired target. So yes, you do want to get those out here, 
the Weavis Incantation, and also the Rockus Queen, but you might want to wait a little bit before you do that. So that's why stalling a little bit by playing your Slizzer to at least prepare yourself for some of that consumption while you're still waiting for those Dagons to get a little bit more powered up, that's a nice option. Maybe bar guess and consume something else with a first round of consumption, or get a wear rat out there and just don't put it next to anything that you need to keep on the board for the time being. Ruin if you still have it, another thing that can help you do more consumption later on as well. But uh, also, once you have the Dagons on the board, you can use Mata, which obviously helps you get more of your high priority cards, but also just extends the length of the round, which is something we love when we have Dagon on the board, because the longer the round goes, the easier it is to power up those Dagons all the way. Similarly, you also have Triss Butterflies, which once you have the Dagons on the board is another good way to stall a little bit so that you get more of those high priority cards without having to consume your Dagons preemptively. At that point, you should be looking at just about the fifth turn for Dagon. Otherwise, you can start playing some of your other Deathwish cards. Siren, generally the best of your Deathwish cards in round three as well, because not only is it going to be a Deathwish card that can give you some boost, but more consumption, and we are going to have a lot of things we want to consume once the Dagons finally do hit that fifth turn. And that's when, of course, you do absolutely want to break out the Raucous Queen to consume that, or you could consume directly with the Slizzard, then wait for a subsequent Dagon to reach that fifth turn, and make sure that you have enough room when you do that, that the free Dagon that you get from Weavis Incantation has enough room to actually get spawned in, which is easier said than done sometimes, because when you consume those Dagons, the earlier turns of Deathwish, notably this first one, will summon in the lowest power Deathwish card from your graveyard into that row, so it will still get rather crowded in that melee row. So just bear that in mind. Basically, from then on out, whenever a Dagon reaches its fifth turn, you consume it with the scissor that you have in that row. If you have more than one Dagon that is on its fifth turn, then you could consume one with scissor, you could consume another with your leader ability, or with some of those other consumption cards we were talking about before. Once you have the Dagons going, that's really all you need. So pull that off, and you are just about unbeatable. So let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here. And we'll go first. All right, so let's see. We have lock removal, which is going to be incredibly important against Imprisonment Nilfgaard. So that's key. Then we have, let's see, we need consumption, and we have some with Slizzard. And we'd like to get some thinning on Arcaspore. We have Rain Warrior, which can be an engine for us, as we do a lot of consumption here. Triss Butterflies, fine tune our hand a little bit further. Vargas is more consumption, but I'm thinking we might be in more need of finding some Death Wish here. I suppose Triss could help us get that, and two Trisses might be overkill, to tell you the truth, because that's just more cards we don't really want to play in round one. That includes Dagon, and we do have Curse Scroll as well. So we have a lot of flexibility, I suppose, but some of that flexibility is still stuff we'd like to save for round three. So I think what we'll do here is I think we will go Slizzard first. I imagine they will see this, and they will immediately try to use a leader ability charge, but then we will on our next turn... Free up that Slizzard using Mahaka Mail. Alright, it's Impura Enforcers, which is damage. Oh, they're gonna create a copy of the Slizzard, it looks like. Which is actually annoying if we had any intention of using the Night Wraith, or Noon Wraith, rather. But uh, we can also consume this if they were about to. They hold on. They're a spy deck, aren't they? They're a full blown spy deck, aren't they? Okay, so yeah, they might crew this, in which case, consuming it does help us a bit. That is potentially an option. Let's go for Rand Warrior. Either way, this will get boosted. Not entirely sure yet just what we are going to consume. Uh, we unfortunately do have one of these in hand. I think what we'll do here in that case is do we have an Onero? Or are they both in our deck right now? They're both in our deck. Okay, so let's grab one of these. And we'll put you back, because we'll find a way, some way, to consume you. Either right now, or as I was saying, consume the informant. Still get a little bit of a boost on that brand warrior, and I suspect they had some plans for some more spy synergies. Because, yes, this, I think, looks a whole lot like a spy's deck. Okay, so now let's at least... Go and get a lot of thinning on these on this arc spore, or ah uh, yeah, We'd either do this now, or we could go and get out with Onero one of the Ruins, and that would consume our lowest card. However, that would be a tie between Vran Warrior and Noon Wraith in that case. The reason why we might want to do that first is once we do the consumption here, we're gonna have a bunch of four point arc spores, which are Deathwish cards, yes, but 
the first death wish matters, every subsequent death wish doesn't really matter. So it does make it much harder if we were intending to use Ruhin later on. So I suppose, tell you what, here's what we'll do. We'll play you. And sure, we'll keep our options open. If we consume you instead, you're gonna boost up that Arcaspore. And now, now if we go and get Ruhin, it should destroy a, a Noon Wraith instead. Vigo, what are they gonna get with him though? That's the big question. More informants, because with all of these enforcers, that's what gives them all the damage. Get more scissors. Battle preparation, okay. Just for the defender, of course. So, now... Now, if we were to get Ruin out here, would consume the informant force, which again, might actually be a good thing to do here. So, I'm leaning in that direction, I think. Siren does also help us get more consumption out here more quickly, but Ruin does too. Ruin just a little bit harder to control. Why don't we go Onero into... Where was the other? Onero. That way we get both Echo Copies going into the next round. And then a Ruin is what I'm looking for. Put it in this row. And we get Triss Butterflies. That one's a little bit harder to determine what we're going to want to do with it. There are other good cards here. Uh, we'll go Siren, and then we might even put a Siren back into our hand, because that is a useful card for this round. Could have gone for another Ruin, I suppose. I do want to make sure we do this. And now, it does mean that Triss Butterflies is likely to be the next target for Ruin. Alright, it's Torres, so he is very powerful. We'll see what cards are creating extra copies of based on what is spying in our deck, which, again, spying synergies, as we anticipated. It means they will have enough damage to destroy Slither, I imagine. Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay, let's see. Out of curiosity, they created a Ruin, a bunch of Weavises, a Rockus Queen. Uh, that's a little scary. Uh, they know what we are trying to do in that case, you have to imagine. And they may be able to do something similar on their side, which is a little bit scary. But let's see, that that was worth a lot of points, that play right there. So we could use Siren here, and it does give us a little more consumption. Otherwise, if we were to consume Ruin, that's another way to give us more consistent consumption. But I think they deliberately hit our Fran Warriors, so that that would be the thing that gets destroyed by Ruin, which is unfortunate. We would very much prefer for it to be you. But what if we go here? another siren out as well and maybe we just go with a leader building charge here get all the other ones out for some thinning and it is enough points for us to at least retake the lead we have played one more card than them so they may be able to level things back out here with one more play but now we do have more consumption units on the board which makes us much more threatening going forward all right it's an emissary now that's the lowest card But those boosts and the spying status that gives more damage to the enforcers is significant. So they've taken what a 12 point lead here. We can still we consume ruin. It would then proceed to consume this emissary. Come back out, we can consume ruin again. And then at that point it would consume the other emissary. Still not great value, because we're not getting bonus Death Wish consumptions. I mean, I, I suppose we would just be talking about Noon Wraith in this case, and that's going to put points on their side of the board, and since they have Slizzards to combat the row flooding, that's not really that big of a deal. So we might be looking to bail here. We might be looking to bail. Unless, technically, we could Triss into uh, Bruis Ritual, which we really would have had to have done on our previous turn, I think, so I'm pretty sure we ought to call it there. Which means they'll win round one. Alright, and we do draw into our second Arrakis Queens, that means we have two out of four of our 
10 proficient cost units in our hand, so we get the other two, our two Weavises, out when we play these. So that's fine. Still want to hold on to that Mahaka Mail because they still have all their leader ability charges, so that is still a threat, the lock. And, I mean, can't really justify getting rid of much of anything else here, although, to tell you what, Triss, given how many tutors we have already, it's not as if we want to get rid of one of these things, so... Where Red is potentially useful? Ah, uh, Weavis is a dead card. So that is one of our other ten provision cost cards that we had a guarantee we we're going to get. We are on even cards here. We had a card to spare. I deliberately passed when we still had five cards in round one, so we will just be able to use the throwaway. The problem is, uh, I wanted this last one that I was mulganing to be a throwaway, and it turned out to be a Weavis, which is no good. So we're going to have to probably... Nero into whatever we decide we are least excited about in round three, and it might be Noon Wraith, is what I'm thinking. Does mean we lose one of our prized Oneros, of course, but as we were just saying, we do have a ton of tutors remaining here. I don't think that needs to be a huge deal. Actually, the Slizzard, though, is unfortunate. That's very much something that we want going into round three. We'll win round two and still be on an even ten cards piece going into round three. All right, so we draw into Cave Troll. That was one of the cards we were going to need. Ruin, which is more of a round one type card. Vargas, more consumption, which is useful, but we really would prefer to see the slizzards, because that is the most consistent form of consumption force. What are we missing here? We are guaranteed to get the other Dagon. We'd like to see Mata to extend the round further. It's really the slizzards, to be honest. I'm gonna dump Ruin, I think. Avaya can help a little bit and could potentially give us some, uh, some wear rat action. So I think we do settle for this. So, first, we would like to go Cave Troll, I think. And then it's going to be Dagon in that row. And basically we're just trying to buy enough time that even if Cave Troll does get answered, Dagon gets powered up enough that they are hesitant to uh, actually destroy him. They could then try to lock, but obviously we still have a Mahaka Mail here, so we can at least unlock one of our Dagon. So getting a little ahead of ourselves, but that is big picture what we're looking at here. And getting a second Cave Troll... Might actually go range row. Yes, we could go double melee row to better protect. That is where I intend to play our Dagons. But range row to help protect our... Our Weavis. Oh, did I not... I forgot to mulligan out the second Weavis, didn't I? I did. Okay. So, with Mata, we may end up getting our Triss. Which we can use to then swap out one of these. I totally forgot that we did that. That is unfortunate. Master... Well, I mean, we have... Cave Troll protecting against Master Puppets, yes, but otherwise Master Puppets would be annoying. Or in general, them putting units on our side of the board is annoying. So, let's see. And most of our value at this point is going to be coming from our gold cards. So this is where we break out Dagon. And Dagon is our only 14 provision cost unit, which means when we play one of them, we are going to get the other one. And when they used Torres, they knew that we were trying to set up the Raucous Queen plus Weavis combo. They did not know that we had Dagon, though, because Torres can only see, what is it, 10 provision cost cards and lower, and Dagon's a 14. So Dagon was invisible at the time. All right, and it's Duchess's Informant. I mean, yes, our consumption can help us. Can help us to get rid of some of these junk cards that they're putting on our side of the board, but we are going to have a lot of cards we want to put on our side of the board, so it is still... A little frustrating to get that. We might even steal the Imperial Enforcers. In fact, we very well may opt to do that. Because they will not be able to steal through the Cave Troll right now. But I think what we're looking for here is going to be Mata. Now that we have Dagons on the board, we want the round to go longer. And Mata can help us do that. I would like for our other 9 provision cost card to be Triss Butterflies, not Ruhin. That way, as I was saying, we can swap out one of these Weavises back into our deck. Let's see what we get here. Okay, uh, it is Ruin, unfortunately. It is Ruin. Alright, so... Do we steal? I think we do, because we're going to give them a Master Puppets, but they can't really do much with it. 
And then we're going to get this Imperial Enforcers, which we can use to hit, uh, well, whatever seems like the most important card to hit. And the longer it takes them to break through this cave troll, the more likely we are to actually get these Dagons fully set up. I'd like for them to get up to five before we get more Masters of Puppets. I mean, again, it very much requires that they can break through the cave troll, which they are being very slow about doing if they have any ability to do it at all. I mean, Enforcers would have been a way. But yeah, so I'd like for these Dagons to get up to five before we actually consume it with a Rockus Queen. Or, I guess, the Bruce Witch Wall. Uh, we used a lot of our bronze Death Wish cards in the previous round, so I'm not really sure we're going to get great value. Uh, I mean, we do have more Death Wish we can, we can use there. But again, it's going to take up a lot of space. So, what are we looking for on this turn? I think it has to be Onero into our Slizzard, unless we want to get really creative and try to go a Baya. Trigger an early Dagon and see if we happen to get a uh, Wear Rat. But no, I think we go this route. I think we go for the more the sure thing. Where is Slizzard? Other oh, Slizzard. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Double Slizzard is beautiful. Alright, now it's Nivellin. That's interesting. That is interesting. That moves one and now two. Assuming they do this. And they steal the Slizzard. Ooh, okay, hold on. Hold on, this just got interesting. Did not see that coming. I imagine they're gonna try to lock this Dagon on their next turn. Now that this is no longer blocked by a defender, they probably should have locked it in the end of their previous turn, to be honest with you, but then we can still use this Maka Mail to unlock it and then consume it with the leader ability charge. You are very safe in this row right now. Still wanna wait one more turn before we do that, but and also still Bargess. If we were to Bargess, we could Consume Ruhin and clear out some room here, and then when it consumes this Spy, I think that's probably what we're looking for in this turn. Then. And we can consume a little bit more as well. Yeah. Okay, we can also steal back. Yeah, that might be worth considering at some point here. Okay, we do this. I'd like to hide you. I'd like to consume you. We may want to steal this lizard back. Okay, it's Ruin, the one that they- one of the cards that they created a copy of from our deck. Oh, okay. Fion does suddenly make it a lot more difficult for us to mess with their Masters of Puppets. But we could steal what would potentially be a valuable Slizzard. Okay, what are they- they're going for Vargas. Okay. So, I- not sure- like, there are some clever things you can do with Master Puppets, but- I think they were relying very heavily on this Master Puppets plus Defender combo. The thing is, we also have the same combo. So, now we can safely consume Dagon. Question is, how do we do that most efficiently? Well, we, we have enough to do that right now, in fact. Probably should. And then that, I'd like to have enough space to go. Did not get the, the Weavis out from our hand. It's unfortunate. We might stall a little bit with Ruiz, but okay. first of all, do that. And do this. And we really should be looking to play these as quickly as possible, but uh, we are a little pressed for space in our ideal row, so I'm going to do this for the time being. Which is mostly an empty card. We do want to make sure we get these. Now we have card advantage, and we have last say, double last say, potentially? Or is it just single last say? But yeah, we may want to steal this lizard very soon, because suddenly that would open up our melee row for consumption, because that's our issue right now, is we have lizard range row, but that is our only consistent source of consumption, is in the range row. They, remember, when a raucous queen, they stole that as well, so they're gonna create a bunch of ruins, was their plan. We obviously went the Dagon route. I mean, technically, we could also go for Ruin. We have Ruin here, and we have Arrakis Queen. But, yeah, their problem is they cannot protect this Slizzard, so we can, especially since we now have Last Say, we can just swoop in on our last turn, swipe a very highly boosted Slizzard, and call it a day. Not to mention we may still be able to go Infinite Dagon here. How do we make enough room for that, though? Well, we can still consume a little bit more with you. I think we still need to clear out some extra space in this row. And I think that means we're just gonna go for what is a little bit of a an insignificant consumption from a you know, no death wish standpoint, but just getting a Dagon out is, of course, critically important. You are very well protected at the moment, so that's also good. Not going to consume you there yet. In fact, do 
need that. Clear out more space. More space, more quickly. Okay, Guillaume. Fortunately, they don't have anything huge they can go after. They're gonna have to settle for the cave troll. But that does suggest they might have some tall removal or something else to mess with that big cave troll. That's a little concerning. All right, let's see. So we'd like to get this Dagon out here. We'd also like to get Weavis and Baraka's Queen out as well, but that has been something that, with their flooding our range row, they've slowed down. Would, if we were consuming Siren, do actually want to put that back into our graveyard because we then can get it back out with Dagon potentially a little bit later on. That means we then do have room for double Weavis, and then we can, we want to get this Dagon out, obviously. But I think that is the play in that case. I'm actually a little tempted to consume that cave troll so they can't target this lizard because it's still hiding behind that cave troll because obviously they have something planned for that. But I think we still go here. We go Weavis, and I believe this will give us our other Weavis as well. Yes. So that's definitely helpful, and that is more consumption as well. And once we have outlasted them because we have more cards, then we can start playing this Dagon in the other future Dagons in the melee row, because they will not be as threatening there. They won't be able to do anything to stop us. And again, we do intend to steal this lizard eventually. Again, when they have uh, passed and we still have cards left. Now, we still don't want to consume this Dagon yet, but we would like to clear out more room, which we can do by consuming this Siren, ideally, with either a Slizzard or one of our Weavises, so I think we will go that route. And then we're going to play this Dagon, and it's going to actually summon out a bunch of cards from our deck, because we're going to get it. its Death Witch triggered immediately from both of those, right? Some of the lowest one? Yeah. So what we're going to do is, I think we're actually going to do this on this turn. And then play Dagon. Get you out. That's exactly what I wanted. More consumption. Perfect. Uh, we might end up consuming one of those Masters of Puppets. Because it is still getting a little bit crowded here. More crowded than we'd like to see it. Alright, it's teleportation to replay Vargas? It's not that meaningful. Although I suppose it means they can re-consume. Okay, fortunately they can't put that in the range row, otherwise that would have been annoying. Melee row is not nearly as clogged. So we are definitely starting to look much better here. We would like to get a raucous queen out, but in order to do that, we need to clear out a little bit of room, and we'd perhaps like to wait until next turn and just do it on this Dagon once it's up at five turns and it's fully charged up. So in that case, I think as we were saying, we really just need one of these Masters of Puppets, which we're going to use to steal that Slizzard. Yeah, maybe steal the Vargas would be nice too, but we just need... One more spot, a little more real estate in this range row would be great. So why don't we consume you? And then we can consume you. And then we're just going to end up, we might just be Mahakame like this turn. Just divide some time here. I think we are by the looks of things. So we also want to wait to play Avaya once we have uh, Rockus Queen. Oh, don't like Rain Far and Clog in the Rage Row, though. That's unfortunate. Does give them an absolutely humongous boost. In fact, they've actually taken the lead and they've purified. Oh, they've stolen our defender status. Of course. That makes sense. Ah, uh, and we did just use our, uh, our lock removal, unfortunately. They steal our Slizzard. We still have, of course some consumption. Actually, several forms of consumption here. So this is going to be a little more interesting than I was giving them credit for. They did have a plan, and I should have seen what the Guillaume play was going to be. Granted, I'm not really sure we had a way of stopping it, but that was well executed. And we should still be able to steal back a Slizzard with this Master of Puppets. Again, we have last say, which is critically important when we are dealing with Masters of Puppets and what have you. So, okay. Now we can go Rockus Queen. And we aren't going to get the double Weavis trigger, unfortunately. Actually, we'd like to put this melee row anyway, wouldn't we? Because if we steal a Slizzard, we're going to get that Slizzard back in the melee row. Really, they should consume that Slizzard with the Vargas, for what it's worth. And we do still have a leader ability charge, but yes, we're going to do 
melee row. Consume that Dagon. We're only going to get one Arrakis Queen out here. Only getting one Arrakis Queen because that was the brick that I was referring to before. So this is still accessible to them, notably. But we now have pretty significant card advantage. All right, it's Obsidian Mirror, which is going to create copies of stuff. Not super helpful for them. They are still in the lead, of course, but we still have the ability to continue on here, whereas they do not. And I think they really needed... I think they really needed to consume this lizard with the Vargas because now we still have the option of stealing this. Now they have passed. They're out of cards, so we can continue here. So as long as we are disciplined, I think we can still pull this off. We want to be playing Dagons in the melee row where we are eventually going to get Slizzard out. Definitely don't want to use this order ability right now. Uh, is it Dagon time, though? I think it still may be. If we do that, we're going to get out more of our Death Wish cards. It might still be... Ah, I mean, it could be any of a number of Death Wish cards. So it's going to clog us a little bit more. So we need to be a little bit careful. I think we're going to save this Siren. We'd like for it to use it on this Dagon or potentially just to clear out additional room here. Then again, can we go Abaya here? I think we actually want to. Okay, and that's actually pretty useful. Question is where? Put it here. That's very slow. Put it there. But it will eventually start getting the stuff that we want. And still, by getting a Baya, we clear out some more room. Slowly but surely. And now we can consume this Dagon here. So our current Dagon count is three. We still have one in our, I guess, really four, once you consider that. And we will shortly, uh, in a few turns, get this Rockus Queen consumed by the Were Rat. But we could go leader ability there if we really wanted to. But now we can, well, I mean, could. that. Okay, now we need to be careful. Now we need to be careful that we don't run out of space here. Um, you're still going to consume. Do we want to use Siren on this turn? Perhaps, perhaps not. I think we let that happen. Now, I think that means we're going Dagon, just increasing the chain here. This one might not quite get up to five by the time the where rat gets there, but we're gonna see. And I think we consume somebody here. What is the restriction on this master puppets? What is stopping this here? Seize bronze enemy unit that moves self to the opposite row. Why? Why not? Okay, so now, yes, we will get this Dagon out. Well, in fact, we've already passed them. So we could go for an infinite Dagon. They realize, and we have already passed them, and so we will take the win. All right, so going up against monsters here. And they'll go first. All right, so we have Ruin, and we have Slizzard, and we have Brewer's Ritual, and we have Arcaspor. Those are all cards that we definitely like to see in round one. Mechascope can potentially give us another Slizzard later on, but that's probably not necessary here and now. So let's dump that. April we would like for round three. We have a lot of stuff we're actually willing to do and willing to play in round one here. Although that... Ruis is going to thin out a lot of stuff. So we are going to get the other one out from our deck as well when we play this. So, uh, I guess we can still make this work. We actually might want a rather long round one in this case. They are going for Siyizgith. Eighth troll. Oh, I think I know what this is. Old geared. I think that's not one of the key components. I imagine... This might be Gurnacora spam. Just giving them the extra Gurnacora's fruit to power it up a little bit more. And that could be a little bit scary if they're able to set that up properly. So let's see what we can do here. I think first things first, we want the scissor. Get the consumption going as quickly as possible. And Frame Warrior is definitely a nice addition as well because we are at least eventually going to start doing a whole lot of consumption. Okay, and yep, that's exactly what they're doing. It is going to be... Without a doubt. More or less the same type of thing we're trying to do. Just they're setting up in round one, and they're going to create a bunch of copies of their Gurnacora or 
Bloody Mistress, and then they're going to use Witch's Sabbath in round two or round three to bring them back. So our lose condition, if you will, is they successfully pulled off in round one and win in round one and then use Witch's Sabbath for round two and try to push 2-0, and then we can't uh, defend the bleed in that case. So we're going to see how quickly we can put up points with Gruhin and Bruis. Bruis and uh, before we do that, though, we should thin Darkest Boar. We don't want to just have this Bruis ritual get out a bunch of Darkest Boars that we were going to get anyway. Okay, it's Noon Race. Are they just trying to rat flood us? Excuse me? Rude? I mean, we could go in a slightly different order here and use Ruin, which can then give us another way to consume rats while still getting a few extra points on the board. Okay. Not exactly the order I was planning to do that in, but it does still work. There's Dagon as well for Mata. Technically, Mata we would prefer to see in round three. So if they're trying to... Honestly, this is probably better for us, a better matchup for us, than if they were trying to use Gurnacor spam. And yeah, I mean, that's absolutely what they're trying to do, actually. They're going for the full bone Rat Flood, and they would have had more options to Rat Flood us there, but they just consume their preferred target for it. Now, the problem now is that we can't really use Brewer's Ritual here. Otherwise, she's just not going to have room, and we can't put her in the range row, because Slizzard can't consume there. So, they are technically giving us points, which is nice in that way. I think we'll go Slizzard, Ruin, going to consume more rats, and probably just play Bridge Troll. We might see what other four provision cost card we get out with that. There's a chance it's another Slizzard. Siren does technically have... Actually, tell you what. We'll go Siren here. Because that has some consumption. And so does Bargas. So we go Bargas. Consume you. Gives us one extra round of that. And we can also do this. Okay. That's more like it. Alright, it's more Noon Wraiths. And they will consume the Noon Wraith. So, I mean, it's... A clever deck. The problem is that uh, it is pretty much based entirely upon them not, uh, on us not being able to consume away the rats that they're flooding us with. So, let's see now we will consume Ruin. Ruin comes back out, consumes you. We want this to get big enough that we can consume with Vargas as well, which we're gonna be one point away from, aren't we? Aren't we? Hold on. What if we do your ability here? No, that doesn't... Does that still do it? No, it's not, not going to. It doesn't really help us much. Still do this. Still not quite there yet. You. Now we return the favor a little bit, potentially. Uh, we can't fit it in the melee row, though. Alright, Siren for more consumption. And they do still have dominance. Somewhat surprisingly, but just barely. Okay, so now what we can do is when we consume you here. Now I believe we have the highest card. Yeah, we do. So we can do this. Although, technically speaking, we may do this first to see if we get another Grand Warrior out, because that is possible. Could. Sneak in for a switch roll, but that is really the biggest thing they've done here is make it much harder for us to squeeze this in because we're going to get the other one out from our deck as well. And the value from this comes from thinning out the other Death Wish cards, but we've been spending so much time trying to eat through the rats that that hasn't really been a possibility. So, we could do this to them. We could do this to them if we really wanted to. We really wanted to. But for the most part, now we're just putting the pressure on them. They need to pass us on this turn, which with a almost 30-point lead here, it's certainly possible they could, but it's not guaranteed. It's another Siren. 
might not be fast enough. Uh, that could be, though. I'm not sure you want to consume that Noon Wraith, though. That will, short-term, give us points. Which means we are in the lead. Which means we can pass here, force them to go two cards down, or give us the lead while we are one card up. And either way, that is not really what they want to be doing here. So they, as I was saying, they got a little carried away with the rats. Yes, that may normally be their win condition, but we very much were able to play around it using Ruin and consuming this aggressively. So they could be in trouble here. All right, they're going to go for... Do they even have the Death Wish trigger? I mean, I don't think it's going to matter. They're going to have enough points now. So they did decide to go two cards down in order to win round one. All right, and we draw into Weavis. We already had Triss, which we can use to get another either Weavis or a Rockus Queen. So we should have just about everything we need for our combo. We'd like to have a throwaway here. One would assume they would dry pass, because otherwise we have two card advantage in round two. Technically, we don't want to play in round two all that much. Gonna get rid of that. Uh, potentially get a throwaway here. I mean, Bridge Troll would be a throwaway. I would consume Brewer's Ritual if we absolutely need to, if they try to push. I mean, they did some... They pushed more aggressively than I thought they were going to try to push in round one, so I would not completely put it past them. Fortunately for us, they do try pass here. We are still going to have card advantage in round three, which is why I was saying they got in a little over their heads in round one, but we'll use Bridge Troll. Don't really want to have to play a Slizzard. Okay, good. Good. We do have one in our hand, at least. We definitely want one Slizzard, at least, for round three, but... Two would perhaps be better still. So, this works. Alright, and there is our, I believe now, final Slizzard. We draw into the other Brewer's Ritual. That is our only 11 provision cost unit, so we're already guaranteed to see this when we play you. So this doesn't really give us any additional value whatsoever. Uh, still not sure it's going to be all that useful for us because we would have preferred that in round one. We do get an Oniro. That is nice. Siren is perfect for this round. We are going to want lots and lots of consumption. Let's see, we have Cave Troll. So it's this, it's this. Set you guys up. Then, what else are we missing here? A Baya, potentially. Yeah, I mean, another Ruin. Ah, it does theoretically give us more consumption potential, so it's not a bad thing. I suppose it's not a bad thing. So it's gonna be Cave Troll first to help protect our Dagon, which has now evolved. I don't know to what extent they're really gonna have control. Okay, this is unfortunate timing. Any turn after this, Mata would have been fine, because it would have meant we could have actually... Well, it does technically still make the round go longer. I guess it technically doesn't make a huge difference. Their hand is not full, again, because they went an extra card down to win round one. Ah, uh, but it gives us Dagon, which we were going to get out when we played this Dagon anyway. It does mean one more card, which means the round is still going longer, but again, really, one more turn. We're about to play Dagon. One more turn before getting Mata out, and we would have been totally fine. Are they going to try to repeat what they did in round one? I mean, we are still going to have more consumption. Obviously, we have bigger and better plans for this round. And unfortunately, Mata sort of breaks Dagon, as we were just saying. Okay, it's Weavis once again. So it might be Rat Swarm. Might be more Rat Swarm. Again, it's not ideal. Because although we can consume those rats, we have other things that we would definitely prefer to be consuming. And once we start consuming these Dagons, their round one ability, and the abilities from the Brewer's Rituals, the one here and the one we'll get out from our deck, will also end up putting more units in our rows. So we are already going to see things get pretty crowded here. But they're sticking with it. They're going for it, man. They're going for it. All right, now we go Slizzard, and this gives us some consumption. And I guess we're putting you here as well. We would like to make sure we at least get Weavis in the ranged row before that potentially gets filled up. So that's that's time sensitive. 
But we could potentially still clear out some room. We have a leader ability charge. Siren gives us a little more consumption. Could Onero, in fact, perhaps even will, Onero into a Were Rat in the range row to help clear this out. And then we can put our Weavises to the left of the Were Rat. And that way we can still avoid consuming the Weavises. So we still have ways to make this work. But they are going to complicate matters a bit. Okay, it's, again, more of the triggers. Okay. But I think Melee Row is still better at this stage. We can still consume to make a little more room here, and probably we Oh, or we can consume Bridge Troll, which I suppose is technically a little bit better. Uh, do we Weavis now? So we, we'd be fine with Weavis giving us another Weavis. Oh, this is going to have to be... Get our second Weavis slash Maracas Queen, isn't it? That's the thing, is we might sort of want to wait one more turn to see if we get the... Uh, so that we get this up to the fifth turn and fully powered up. So that if we do get the Arrakis Queen out of here, we're still feeling fine about using Dagon on that. Using it on Dagon. So I think we'll go Slizzard. Wanted for that to be melee row. And we can theoretically return the favor. Wanted this to be melee row. Uh, technically, we could have consumed there and then made room for it melee row, because melee row is eventually going to be higher priority to consume the Dagons. That is probably where we are going to want to use all of our Dagons. Because that is where we have our defender, of course. Okay, that did not really threaten at all. So now we can. Now we can consume this Dagon either with this Lizard or if we are to get an Arrakis Queen out here. But we definitely want do this. And it is a Rock Queen. Okay, so we put you... I think we'll still go Melee Row here. And we're gonna consume this. And, oh, technically speaking, we needed a little bit more room in here to get the extra Deathwish proc from that Weavis, didn't we? Ooh, so that did break a little bit. But, that's actually not good news. That might, in fact, even break our Infinite Dagon, technically speaking. So, not ideal. Let's do that. Let's continue to clear out space at the very least. Alright, Bruis. They can consume that Noon Wraith, which I imagine they will do at some point. Okay, it's flooding Melee Row, but we can still work around that. So yeah, we don't really need to go Infinite Dagon here. We probably may have, may have made it, so we have one Dagon too few to pull it off now, especially because uh, we... Oh, we... Okay, we still have Triss Butterflies. We still have Triss Butterflies, which we could use to swap out possibly even Siren or really Brewer's Ritual, I think, to get either... The additional Weavis slash Baracus Queen that way, or use that to get the uh, consumption for this row to clear out some space. Is that what we were thinking would be the other thing we want to do? Where we're at there? Okay, well, either way. I think we do want to clear out a little bit of room here. And sure, here. We want to play Dagon as quickly as possible. need to do this on this turn, don't we? Let's get the Dagons going as quickly as possible there, too. So, okay. It's Yurden. It's early enough that they can reset, and we have done some consumption, so that does work reasonably well, but of course, we, after consuming a Dagon, now have pretty huge card advantage. So, if we can still make this Infinite Dagon, then there is no stopping us. Unless they can disrupt, but at this point, uh, there's not a lot they can do. It's just a matter of us working out the math. Okay, you are all the way at turn 5 already. Wow. Okay, I did not even realize that. So, that means we are getting you now. We'll get you out, get this Dagon back, which we technically can put in... The Range Row, if we really want to. No, it's not protected by our Defender, unfortunately, but we have this Lizard here, so it is technically still an option. Yeah, I think we do want to do that, then. 
get out this bridge troll, and we'll just consume Masa is, or really, bridge troll, I suppose. Best option here. So this Dagon, theoretically, they may be able to mess with. Zalzrel have some tens, or at least one ten, because they did the Olgeard in round one. Okay, so let's see. No Dagons at the moment that are ready to go. So I think what we'd like to do here is go into Chris Butterflies and use this to get our other setup for uh, for Weavis. We want to get should really get that out as quickly as possible. Wanted that earlier, to be honest. So now we just get rid of some rats. They're at room here in anticipation of future use it, future cards we want to play here. And uh, Ruin could help as well with that purpose, but go Triss. Triss is okay to get consumed, so I'm gonna put her more on the right side. I'm gonna put back you. Gonna... Oh, they're gonna realize <laughs> that uh, we have just about set up Infinite Aegon, and so there's no way they can catch us. They forfeit. So there's a look at a Monster's Death Wish Consumption Infinite Dagon deck for the new Double Down Seasonal event. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions we should experiment with next. And take a look at our playlist with all of our previous Double Down decks as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.